Today, we are learning to use opposite operations to find unknown values in equations that use addition. But first, there are some terms that we need to define. First of all, equation. And second of all, opposite operations. Let's first talk about equation. Equation means same on both sides. Both sides are equal, and so we use an equal sign. It's as though we've got some scales and they are balanced. Each side is exactly the same, though they may look different. For example, 2 plus 2 is 4. We could also write 2 plus 2 as... 5 minus 1, because that equals 4, that equals 4, both sides are still the same. An opposite operation, which you may hear called an inverse operation, undoes what we did to a number. Let me give you an example. 5 plus 3 equals 8. So we've got 5 and we've added 3 to get to 8. We've got eight counters here. Now, if I wanted to get back to five, I would need to take these three away. So we can write that a little bit differently. So we've got eight here, eight minus, and I want to take away these three. So eight minus three equals five. So we have gotten rid of these three. These ones don't exist anymore. 8 minus 3 equals 5. We undid what we did to 5 to get by added, when we added 3 by taking 3 away. That means that subtraction is the opposite operation to addition. And that's what we're going to be focusing on for this video. But it's also important to know that multiplication and division are opposite one another as well. So we've got two opposite operation relationships here. So plus and minus, or addition and subtraction, are related. So these two are opposite one another. And multiplication and division are also opposite operations, but they're not opposite to these ones. So you cannot, so times and addition and plus, times and plus are not opposite. Division and subtraction are not opposite. They're Multiplication and division are opposite each other. Likewise, addition and subtraction are opposite each other. And what opposite operations allow us to do is that without changing any of the values, we can switch these in to undo what we did in an equation. Because we know that equations are equal on both sides, we can use this knowledge to find missing values. Often you'll see something easy like this. 10 plus 10 equals. Now, often we don't write a missing value on this side because we know that we need to find what this side is. Now we know that we've got 10 plus 10 equals 20, so we know that this side equals 20. But what we're actually doing here is finding what this side equals as well. We know that this side is equal to 20, so this side must also equal 20. But you can also write this equation like this, 10 plus x equals 20. Now our missing value is not on this side of the equation. It is here. Now I know that this is going to be 10 because I need to add 10 to 10 to get to 20. But let's work it out when I haven't already written the equation out beforehand. Let's start with a simple sum that we don't know one of the values for. Now this will work for any sum you come across, but I'm going to keep it nice and simple today. So we have got 2 plus x ooh, equals 5. Now, x just means a number that we don't know what it is yet. So we kind of just put a, a th something there in its place. We will find out what that is a little bit later. Now, how are we going to solve this? I want to know what x is. Well, I know that equations mean the same on both sides. So these two numbers together will be 5. And 5, of course, is 5. So I need to know what I need to do to 2 to get to 5. Now, because this is a simple equation, of course, we could just count up, 
or we could do this by trial or error, but we are mathematicians. And so we like to make things as simple and straightforward as we can. And we don't wanna to have too many steps. We can do this without too many steps. By trial and error and counting, that's just gonna take far too long. So I want to find out what X is. So if I had X on one side of the equation by itself, and both of these terms on the same side, I could work that out. Now, I am adding x and two together. So I'd actually like to get two onto this side of the equation so that I have x all by itself. Now, to do that, I need to use opposite operations. Now, the reason why I need to use opposite operations is because whenever a number jumps onto the other side, whenever we rearrange an equation so that one number jumps onto the other side, we need to use its opposite or its inverse. So I would like the two to go here, but I need to know the operation. Now that will cancel this two, that'll get rid of that two. It's now on this side. And because I'm using addition here, I need to use its opposite, which is subtraction. Let me rewrite this so it like makes a little bit more sense now. So now we've got x equals five minus two. Now, because these are exactly the same on each side, I, it doesn't actually matter which side I write these expressions on. So I'm gonna write it in a way that might make a little more sense. I'm just gonna flip the expressions around. So we've got five minus two equals X. Oh, okay. This is looking like something I can solve for. I know that five minus two, now five, <laughs> minus two equals three. So now if I go back to my original equation, which I'm gonna write in blue down here, two plus x equals five, I now know that x, I could write down two plus three equals five. That is correct. I have found the missing value. That's actually all I need to do. Let's try another one, shall we? So I know that we can do this and I know it works and I've even checked my answer. It's good to check our workings out just to make sure that we are doing it correctly. Let's try another one. Let's try x plus 12 equals 16. Okay, so I know that this side equals 16 and therefore this side also equals 16. Now I am adding 12 to x. So I wanna get 12 onto this side so that I've got x all by itself. The way I do that, of course, is to jump it across. I need to not add it on this side. I need to take it away. When I take it away on this side, I can take it away on this side because I'm balancing them out. If I take 12 from one side of the scales, I need to take it from 12 from the other side to make sure that the scales are still in balance. So now I've got this equation, x equals 16, minus 12. Now I could leave it on that the same side, but I actually like to flip them around. It just makes a little bit more sense to me. So 16 minus 12 equals X. Remember, it doesn't matter what side, what, which way around the scales are actually. Now I can work this out. So 16 minus 12 equals four. So I could now, so now I know that X and missing value is four. Fantastic. Let's use this in a worded problem. Joe has three apples, but Ben gave him some more. Now Joe has 10 apples. How many apples did Ben give Joe? Now I know how many apples that Joe ended up with, and I know how many he started with, and I want to know how many were added during that time. Now I can write that like this. So I know how many he's got at the end. So he's got 10 at the end. So equals 10, that's 10 on one side. At the end of it, he start, he ends up with 10. And he starts with three, doesn't he? So I go, and then he got added sum. Sum, that's not a particular number, is it? So we've just added a number and I'll represent that by X because I don't know what it is yet. I don't want that, I want to find that out. Now. That's, that looks like something I can solve, doesn't it? So now I want to jump that three over to the other side. So I'm going to jump it over. Now we'll remember whenever we jump anything to the other side of an equal sign, we need to use the inverse or opposite operation. So instead of adding three, we are subtracting three. Now that gets rid of all of that. Okay, I'll leave it there just so we can see what we did though. 
but I'll cross it out. Now this looks a lot like what we've been working with. Now I'm gonna, so I've got x equals 10 minus three. I would like to switch these around just so it makes a little bit more sense. I don't have to though. So now I've got 10 minus three equals x. Let's bring it up here so you can still see it. I've run out of page down here. 10 minus three equals, what's 10 minus three? That equals seven. So now because it's a worded problem, I need a worded answer. Ben gave Joe seven apples. And there we have it. In this video, we have learned how to use opposite operations to find missing values in addition equations.